hope all of you have enjoyed what you've seen so far out of this 12 Days of OTR Essential Christmas Series 2020 edition. Got lots more great content in the week to come. So make sure you stay tuned. First time checking out this channel or this video series. If you haven't done so yet, smash that subscribe button. Subscribe or die. That's the way to be. Today's topic should be interesting. Lots of ranting and raving at legends and Hall of Famers about how the hell they managed to ruin their legacies, at least to some level or degree, by staying around too damn long. That's right. Today's topic the eight greatest wrestlers who stuck around, hung around, way too damn long. He's the icon. There's no question about it. And one thing I always wanted to see from Sting was him come to WWE. Although, on the other hand, there was a part of me that says... I didn't ever want him to come work for Vince because he didn't need to. Because he was the freaking icon Sting. But the fact that he finally made the turn to WWE in his mid-50s after having spent almost a decade in TNA throughout his 40s and 50s, like it was cool and all, but enough was enough. And then to see the legend, the icon, it's Sting! still be a thing in pro wrestling coming to AEW in 2020 at the age of 61? Yeah, it diminishes the appeal and the impact a little bit. Sting should have hung him up years ago. Tell Kane stayed around about five to seven years way too long. Because they got to the point to him, similar with Big Show, where they were always having him flop back and forth between face and heel, face and heel. And they were jobbing him out too often, putting him in any too many stupid spots. Like, to me, Kane was always a character that was best when he limited exposure. And once you started to trot him out there each and every single week, it just lost some of the appeal. And then as you started to see Glenn Jacobs Kane start getting into his 40s and you know getting older, it really just didn't have the same buzz or appeal. And by Kane sticking around for so many years, and God love him, like did a lot of great work for the company over the years, helped a lot of young talent out for sure. No disrespect meant, but Kane was a dude that I used to be a raging mark for. And by the time we got to the middle of the last decade, I wanted Kane to go the F away. If that's not the epitome of somebody hanging around too long, I don't know what the hell is. Wrestling into their 60s and even their early 70s is something that should be highly frowned upon. Highly frowned upon. In Abdullah the Butcher's case, that certainly is no different just from the fact that nobody wants to see that big walking mountain of gelatinous goo still working with his freaking side tits hanging down in his mid-60s. And then when you find out that he's given hepatitis C to half the damn independent scene, there's a perfect example of a guy that's a legend in many ways that made a lot of money throughout wrestling over the years, hanging around way too effing long, and it really diminishing and hurting his impact, his legacy, and how his career is ultimately remembered. He's no more as a super spreader of FC than being one of the true hardcore legends for decades in the history of the wrestling business. Oh, you know he was going to make this list at number five, The Undertaker. He's absolutely worthy of being on this list. And I don't think anybody will dispute that. Once the streak ended... He ceased to have any purpose. He really did. And when you would bring him back, like, it's cool, there's the nostalgia thing, but then it's like, okay, if he wins at Mania, it's stupid. Why the hell did you end the streak? If he loses at Mania, it doesn't mean as much anymore. Why the hell did you end the streak? Like, there was just no point. And now he's hanging around too much, so he might have a good match, but then he turns around and has a really crummy, crappy match. I remind you that you're watching a broken-down old man in his 50s trying to relive his glory years. Like, still to this day, I truly wish he would have left forever after WrestleMania 28. That end of an era match, like, 20-0, streak intact, 
walk away, that was the way to go out. Not how he actually did in front of no fans and a bunch of canned fake noise at Survivor Series 2020. Yeah, Taker hung around about seven to eight damn years longer than he needed to. Number four, Hulk Hogan. And this goes both wrestling-related and not wrestling-related. The wrestling-related part, him going to TNA and putting himself in a position where he was working matches with his back being surgically fused and destroyed when he's pushing 60. Like, who the hell wants to see that? Really? Seeing him kind of walk all limp and hobble around? Like, that was the sign of somebody that really needed the money and at the same point dying didn't know that it was time to move the hell on with his life. And then, of course, when you look at outside of the wrestling business, you know, the leaked tapes with Hulk Hogan saying that ignorant racist crap. Like, I could say on both levels, both personally and wrestling business-wise, Hulk Hogan stuck around about a decade too damn long for my liking, and it really ruined and damaged his career legacy significantly, and that will remain forever. The only really good, honest thing that ever came out of Ric Flair in TNA was him and Jay Lethal. That's it! There's absolutely no appeal to seeing this 60-plus-year-old man sitting there bleeding and freaking looking like a hot mess. Like... It was bad enough by the time he got to 2008. It was clear that Ric Flair was done. Like he should have already been done a few years before that. Maybe 2004, 2005-ish. But hey, you get to WrestleMania 24. You get that great retirement match with Shawn Michaels. What a perfect kind of feather in the cap to culminate your career and be one of the true legends and icons in the history of wrestling. But instead, Rick needed the money. He couldn't let it go. And you could say, well, it's the nature boy. It doesn't hurt his legacy. But yeah, it kind of did a little bit. Because there's something a little bit sad and pathetic about an old man trying to relive his glory days like he's in his 20s and 30s when he's in his 60s. Like, time to grow up and move the F on. And Ric Flair certainly should have long since been done. And him going to TNA and being an active in-ring competitor, give me an effing break. Love him, hardcore legend, one of my wrestlers that I respect the most in the history of the business, a wonderful guy, unselfish, did so many things to help out companies, to help out talent. Like, there's hardly a bad word you can ever find that's spoken about Terry Funk. But when you're still trying to wrestle in your early 70s, like, you have hung on way too damn long. Like, every time you hear Terry Funk, Talk about a retirement. Like, you can even remember going back and watching the old Beyond the Mat documentary. Like, Terry Funk's going to have his retirement match. That was in the late 1990s. Like, I, I seriously, I mean, no disrespect to the guy, because I love Terry Funk. Most knowledgeable wrestling fans with a pulse and a brain in their head love Terry Funk. But you only want to see the Funker, but for so long. And the fact that he's still going out there putting his body on the line, his matches in his 70s, is just ridiculous. Like, why are you doing that? Let it go. Let it go. Stop killing your body for this business. Because it doesn't love you back the same. The fans might, but the business itself doesn't. I hope Terry never steps in a wrestling ring ever again. You hung on way too damn long, dude. Personally, I think number one on the list has to be obvious. It's Jerry the King Waller. From a commentary standpoint, like him being on commentary this past decade, he became this kind of lame-ass, baby-faced John Cena, baby-faced, ball-washing commentator. And it was horrible having to go from the witty, snarky heel commentator that was legendary and part of a legendary team, him and Jim Ross together, going from those great fantastic memories to seeing what he became a shell of his former self as a commentator was sickening, damn near vomit-inducing. And then when you think about him as a wrestler, now, you know, you would typically think that, hey, I did something 
that led to me having a heart attack where I literally died and had to be resuscitated and brought back to life. And it happened on national live television on Monday Night Raw years back. You would think that would be a good indication of, hey, buddy, it's time to stop doing this. Let's not do this wrestling thing anymore. But yet this a-hole continues to persist. He just can't let it go. And if I'm not mistaken, in 2020, didn't he just win like an Arkansas championship? Like, not only is he still wrestling and still winning matches, he's still sitting there winning matches and winning damn titles for territories. You might say, oh, that doesn't really matter. It's the Indies. Like, it's just trying to get some attention and everything else. But yeah, the dude's, what, pushing 74, 75 years old? Jerry, you had a legendary career as a wrestler, a legendary career as a commentator. The best thing you can do for your career, and frankly for all of us, is to sit down and just go the hell away. You hung on for about 10 to, I would argue, almost 15 years too damn long. Here you have at my list of the eight greatest wrestlers who hung on for way too damn long. You know, certainly could have come up with other names. There are lots of them. I think of Vern Gagne is one. Fritz Von Erich is another. I could go on and on and on. But these were the guys, the eight greatest wrestlers I could think of to me that hung on too long. So that's my list. You can feel free to let me know your list in the comments. Make sure you check out the rest of the 12 Days of OTR Essential video series. Some other good videos have been on this series so far and plenty more to come. And speaking of that, the next video topic of this series is going to be about the seven things I miss most about professional wrestling. That should be an interesting one. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. So again, smash that subscribe button. Subscribe and I! Tell your friends! Watch this video! Watch the whole series! Watch all the videos on this channel! And do what you're doing now! Thank you!